You are listening to the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast, episode 57. Today, I'm going to talk about what I'm making in my kitchen. It is summer, which means that everything is ripe and available and in abundance. And so it's a really fun time to experiment in the kitchen. Also, a great time to make simple meals because if you're like us, you want to be doing things outside right now. Of course, all the pools are closed, but we find ourselves at creeks. We've been meeting up with friends, going to their pool, hanging out with my sister, just lots of fun outside activities, not as much time in the kitchen. And so I like to keep things simple and fresh, and I want to share with you all that I'm currently making. If you do not yet have access to the Pharma on Boone subscriber library, it's a place where I have all of my free eBooks and printables, everything you need to get started on your simple living journey. Make sure to go over and grab that at farmhouseonboon.com slash farmhouse resources. My name is Lisa, mom of six and creator of the blog and YouTube channel, Farmhouse on Boone. Join me as I share with you my love for creating a handmade home from scratch cooking and a little mom and entrepreneur life along the way. Now, if you are the kind of person who doesn't have a garden, now is even a really good time to stock up at farmer's markets. Me personally, I do have a garden, but I don't grow everything. I have lots of zucchini and tomatoes in abundance, Swiss chard, herbs, getting some pumpkins, but I don't have things like corn and green beans. I grew up some potatoes and onions, but not nearly enough. We already ate all of the ones that I grew. And so right now I love finding different farmer's markets. We have one near our town, about seven miles away, where I go and stock up on whatever they have um, available. Just the other day, we were picking up milk at a local co-op. It's about 30 minutes away, and I stopped into the farmer's market there and got uh, several weeks worth of onions and sweet corn, pecans, I'm trying to remember what else I got there, cucumbers, all kinds of uh, delicious stuff. And that's really a wonderful strategy if you aren't growing a huge garden and you just don't have time to garden, which I find myself not really having enough time to devote to gardening to make it really worthwhile, consider going and stocking up and doing some of the things that maybe you see um, people fermenting and canning and preserving. You can go, of course, and stock up at a local farmer's market and do all the same thing just with somebody who did spend the time farming. You'll pay a little bit more, but sometimes it's just worth your time. All right, so let's dive into some of the things that I've been making. One is tacos. I feel like tacos are the perfect summer meal. You don't have to light the oven, which in my house, since I have a 1949 oven, I do have to actually light it. And so uh, it does get the kitchen pretty hot, actually hotter than my modern oven, go figure. So I try to not use the oven as much in the summer. Now I am using it some, but I love that tacos, you can just cook some meat on your cast iron skillet on the stovetop or out on the grill. And then the best part about it is what all you can pair it with. So you can make some fresh salsa, go to the farmer's market, get a whole bunch of tomatoes, uh, cilantro, onions, jalapeno peppers, and make up a quick and easy salsa. Add some salt, maybe a little tiny dash of sugar, makes it really good. And serve the tacos maybe with a little bit of rice and sweet corn. Now the reason that I actually like making rice in the summer is we don't eat a whole lot of soup, but yet I still have lots of bone broth. We still like to consume it, it's still good for us. And so rice is a good way to consume bone broth because it all soaks up when you're cooking the rice and then you can eat that rice and be getting your bone broth. Another little salsa that I like to make in the summer is a cucumber and mango salsa. Where I live, there aren't mangoes fresh and seasonally available, of course, but you can still get them. And this salsa is a great way to use up a whole bunch of cucumbers. So I mix up diced cucumber, diced mango, diced onions, cilantro, lime juice, salt, pepper. Uh, I believe that's all I add to it. Maybe a little jalapeno if the kids aren't eating it. This makes the best fresh summer tacos. So you can either grill up a little bit of tilapia and do a fish taco. You can make some chicken breasts or some steak. If you have a sirloin, slice it really thinly, add some salt and pepper, a little bit of cumin, some of that salsa, the cucumber kind. Oh man, it is so good. For tortilla shells, I like to a lot of times just get corn tortillas, 
and heat them up on each side on my cast iron skillet. But if you want to do it from scratch, sourdough tortillas are really easy. The recipe is on my blog, but my favorite way to make them is with freshly milled einkorn. I mix up, I forget the exact amounts because I usually just look up the recipe on my blog to remember it, but einkorn flour, sourdough starter, olive oil, salt, and some water, a little bit of water, and then just roll them out, fry them up. Now you can let them soak overnight to get those fermented benefits of the sourdough, but if you don't have time for that, which I often just forget, um, I just will make them just like that really quickly and then wrap up whatever kind of burrito or taco I'm making. Another option is tuna salad. This is something that I forgot about. We were doing this last summer a lot and then it just slipped my mind all through the fall and winter and spring and we're back in action with it now. So I mix up some of my homemade mayo, which if you have not yet tried it, get a wide mouth mason jar, crack an egg in it. Now this does require raw eggs. So I recommend you use your own caution on that and if you can access fresh eggs so like we get them from our own chickens um, that would be better crack an egg in the bottom add about a teaspoon of mustard a teaspoon of lemon or lime juice i've used either one interchangeably uh, i believe about a half teaspoon of salt and then add over the top of all of that a cup of oil i like to use avocado oil I find that coconut oil does work in a pinch, but if you put it in the refrigerator, so if you don't use it all at once, which in my family with tuna salad, we actually do use it all in one sitting if we're making something like tuna salad, which is mayo heavy. But if you put the coconut oil kind in the fridge, it definitely gets hard in a weird consistency. So only use coconut oil if you're in a pinch or if you're gonna be using it all right away. And then olive oil gives it a strong taste. That being said, I've used all of those and it's always it always has worked just fine. You add your immersion blender all the way down to the bottom and start blending and then slowly lift the immersion blender up and it works every single time. I've had people say on my blog um, that it didn't work for them, but I've never had it not work. And my sister also makes it and one of my best friends and we all do it the same way and it always works. So try that, mix it up with some tuna. I like to use the Wild Planet because it has the BPA free can. It's grown in all the best ways. I get it on Amazon, but I'm also looking for some other sources, trying to utilize Amazon less and less. So I'm looking for some other sources for that. That is currently where I get the Wild Planet tuna and I mix in a little bit of diced onion, which is also something readily available right now at the farmer's markets. Now, I have been making a ton of my sourdough einkorn bread. I was asked in, I believe, episode 44, what is one recipe I really want to make and perfect? And I answered that it was sourdough einkorn bread. Well, that has since happened, and this is now our staple bread that I use all the time. I love all of the other bread recipes. The reason that I want this to be the bread recipe that I make all the time is it's made with einkorn, so it's that ancient wheat. We can tolerate it better. It is sourdough and not made with commercial yeast. So although I find the all-purpose artisan sourdough bread to be tastier, I like that it's really crusty and fluffy on the inside. It's, it's just perfect. It is not the bread I wanna make every day because I don't wanna be consuming that much all-purpose flour. So the way that I make this particular einkorn bread, which I use for my tuna salad, I use for chicken salad, BLTs, all of those other light summer sandwiches and cold summer sandwiches, which, which are perfect, is I mix up a cup of sourdough starter, a cup of water, a teaspoon of salt, and five cups of freshly milled einkorn. Does not have to be kneaded because einkorn, the more you knead it, the stickier it gets. So you do it until it's just incorporated, shape a loaf, Add it to a stainless steel loaf pan, allow it to rise until doubled, which is, depending on how hot your house is, could be anywhere from three hours up to six. So I usually will start this in the morning and we can have it at lunchtime. And then I just bake it on, I believe I do about 375. I don't even probably do it the same every time. I just bake it until it's done. And we have been enjoying this so much. I don't have any guilt about feeding it to my family regularly. Sometimes, you know, you want to limit bread a little bit, but when it's made with freshly milled einkorn and it's soured with a homemade sourdough starter, it is one of those no compromise things and it's the perfect vessel for all kinds of summer dishes. So tuna salad, uh, I like to make a Southwest chicken salad. You can use a lot of those farm fresh tomatoes, onions, uh, mix up homemade mayo again, 
herbs from the garden and then just add to it um, chicken from the Instant Pots. I like to make in the summer a lot of whole chickens in the Instant Pot. I just, if they're frozen, I put them in the Instant Pot with about a cup of water and put them on for 90 minutes. If they are not frozen, so they're fully thawed, I'll do it for about 40 minutes. And then I just pick all the chicken from the bone, reserve the bones for bone broth, and then I have enough chicken to make at least two or three days worth of chicken salad. Oh, also you can add to the Southwest chicken salad, sweet corn, cumin, lime juice, just anything fresh from the garden. You could even probably get away in such a mayonnaise-y, salty deliciousness of chicken salad. You could probably even get away with adding in some diced, very tiny diced cucumbers and your kids wouldn't even notice. So salads like tuna and chicken are really a great way to hide in some of those farm fresh veggies that maybe your kids would turn their noses up at otherwise. Another good sandwich to put on einkorn sourdough is a cream cheese veggie sandwich. I used to make these all the time and my husband was asking me the other day, hey, what about that sandwich you used to make? So slice some bread, slather on some cream cheese, maybe add a little bit of salt and pepper, and then whatever garden veggies you have. So it tastes really good with cucumbers and tomatoes, fresh herbs, salt, pepper. Now it's iffy on if your kids will like this. Some kids don't. Now if you add maybe a slice of bacon, it would encourage them a little bit more like a BLT with cream cheese, maybe some really thinly sliced cucumber you could get away with. Those are great. Another thing I've been trying, this was one time out of, I didn't have enough space in my oven to make the number of pizzas I wanted because we were wanting to make pizza. I wanted mushrooms and jalapenos and date sauce and goat cheese on mine because I'm an adult and I like those more foody combinations. But the kids, they just wanted sausage and cheese on their homemade pizza. And so in order to get all of my crust, and so normally I preheat a cast iron skillet or a pizza stone in the oven until it gets really hot, add sourdough starter, a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, and that's how I make my crust. But I wanted to make lots of pizzas. So I did a few in the oven like that. And then I made a few on some preheated skillets just on the stove top. And to my surprise, it worked really, really well. And so this is a good way if you want to make stovetop pizzas, you don't want to turn your oven on, you can. So preheat a cast iron skillet till it's pretty darn hot, add a little bit of oil, then slather on some sourdough starter and get the get it really thin. Like don't you don't want it thick like a pancake. You want it thin. Add a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, maybe some fresh herbs. It should mostly cook when it hits the skillet because it's been preheated so much and you're making the crust so thin that when it hits the skillet within about 10 seconds, you should see that it's cooked. You can cook it just a few more seconds, maybe up to a minute. At that point, you can either pull it out of the skillet, it will be intact, like a pizza crust that you can actually maneuver and get out of the pan and put it on a sheet and top it with cheese and toppings and then finish it off baking. Uh, I haven't experimented with cooking the cheese on the stove top. I imagine that the bottom of the crust would burn more quickly, but maybe you could even pop it out and put it on the grill with the toppings. Now we aren't grillers, but if we were, I would definitely try that. So stove top pizza crust is like my new thing. I can get tons of individual sized pizza crusts onto a large baking sheet. Everybody can have their own. It's a fun activity as well for kids to be able to put on their own toppings and cheese. And it also allows you to use the oven less because you're only finishing off the cheese baking in the oven and not the whole crust baking process. And pizzas are also just really good for summer because you can use so many farm fresh things like a homemade pasta sauce, for example. I take fresh tomatoes, Put them into my cast iron Dutch oven or a saucepan. Add fresh onions, basil, rosemary, thyme, any herbs from the garden at all. Salt, pepper, maybe a touch of sugar. I find that a little bit of sugar tastes really good in tomatoey things. Put the lid on, allow it to simmer. Pop in my immersion blender to get it nice and smooth. And it makes a delicious pizza sauce or a pasta sauce, which leads me to my next thing that we've been making, and that is homemade pasta. So this is something that I'm new to trying. I think we've done it three times now. Always turns out perfect. I am so surprised at how easy making homemade pasta is. I thought it would be a lot harder. Essentially the recipe we're doing is four cups of einkorn flour in a bowl, make a well in the center, add four eggs, 
scramble up the eggs with a fork in the middle, incorporate the flour into the egg. You have to use your hand and it'll make like a really stiff dough ball. And then I just divide it into four equal parts, flatten it out, and then start putting it through my pasta roller. And in the pasta roller, I start on the eight setting, move it down um, until it's down to the two setting. And then I just put it through the pasta cutter after that. It so that sounds complicated, but it is not. And I also, like the first time I made it, I noticed that a lot of, of the noodles were breaking when they'd go through. It still, even with some of the ones being broken, totally turns out and makes like a nice pot of pasta even when it's not perfect. It always ends up looking like store-bought pasta even if you sort of mess it up. I'm going to be posting the einkorn pasta recipe on my blog and it might even be out by the time that this comes out. But I actually demonstrated it in one of my What We Eat In A Week videos, one of my recent ones. If you go to my YouTube channel, you can find it on June 1st, 2020. Um, I show you that process on video so you can actually um, make it. And then I just cook it in boiling water and add some salt to the water to flavor it at that point. But pasta is such a good summer thing because again, you can make something that has so many fresh vegetables. So you could toss it with olive oil and add diced tomatoes and some fresh Parmesan cheese. Also, we have been making pesto. So we have a garden full of basil and I just put it in the food processor with olive oil, Parmesan cheese, and walnuts. I don't even measure, I just add a little bit of this, a little bit of that, add some salt, taste it. And we made a huge batch and toss that with some of our homemade pasta. You could also add some of that chicken that you were cooking in the Instant Pot. It makes a really nice, light summer meal and a great way to use up all that fresh basil. Another good option for summer is big salads. So, you know, a salad with some homemade ranch. I have a kefir ranch over on the farmhouseonboon.com blog. Fresh veggies, hard boiled eggs. We have chickens laying right now a lot, but in the fall, you know, they start, they sort of slow down. So now's a really good time to cook a lot of hard boiled eggs. I like to steam them in the Instant Pot so they're easier to peel, make a lot of egg salad on that einkorn sourdough. A couple of other ways I like to use up zucchini because we are getting tons of zucchini right now. And I know that you probably are too if you have a garden. Zucchini lasagna, so you make a lasagna just like you normally would, but with thinly sliced zucchini instead of the noodles. Again, I have that recipe over on farmasanboon.com if you just search zucchini lasagna. Another thing to do, of course, is make those zoodles. So if you have one of those um, spiralizers, making a pasta, cook up some sausage, make some of that homemade pasta sauce with the tomatoes, toss it all together, that's really great. Something we really like to do is shred up zucchini, Add it to a cast iron skillet with butter and then top it with cheese and it makes like a zucchini mac and cheese. That's one way that I really find that the kids enjoy it. Another simple option for summer is a simple roasted chicken with green beans or any market fresh vegetables that you can find. I like to top chicken with a date barbecue sauce uh, that I get from the date lady who was on this podcast in the past, that is another really great thing, especially if you are out uh, grilling chicken, that's really great. As far as desserts, we don't have fruit here to pick yet, but we've been picking, um, we've gone to do all the things, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, peaches. We've been making up my sourdough peach cobbler, a sourdough blackberry cobbler. The other night we made a homemade ice cream. We went to our milk pickup and sometimes the farmer brings cream. Sometimes she doesn't, but she did, and she sold me two quarts of it. Usually it's one of those things that um, everybody wants, and so you have to get there really early if you want it. She limits how many you can buy. Well, I was able to buy two, and so we came home, and I took two cups of goat milk, two cups of the fresh raw cream, about a half a cup of sugar, four eggs, a bunch of vanilla, probably too much vanilla, blended it all up and then just added it to my ice cream ma maker and we topped that with fresh blackberries that we picked. Such a perfect summer treat. All right, well, I hope that this podcast episode was helpful for you to get your wheels a turning ideas for summer recipes to give you a little insight into what we're cooking and enjoying with all of the farm fresh local goodness right now. If you do not yet have access to the Farmhouse on Boone subscriber library, it's a place where I have all of my free eBooks and resources and printables for you to get started on the simple living journey. 
You can get that at farmhouseonboom.com slash farmhouse resources. Thank you so much for listening. And I will talk to you in the next episode of the simple farmhouse life podcast.